How are you today? Art Jeremiah here, and I'm back with another dungeon building episode. Today, you're just going to hear my voice as I'm out on vacation, and I don't have much of a setup to do a voiceover. And this room is the prison room that we rolled up at the beginning of the dungeon build. And it's going to include a wall of fire and several prison cells. So first thing we're going to do is build the prison cells. And I'm actually going to do a little bit of a cage with a chain on top. Anyway, I can't really explain what I'm trying to say. I've tried like five times already. So we're done. We're going to continue. And we're going to start off by cutting out some pieces of styrofoam. And these pieces of styrofoam, I'm just trying to measure out the right size. And I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not really doing any specific measurement. I just want it to fit nice against the wall and kind of line up with the grid as well. And I'm just using my proxy on cutter for this and then I'm gonna do an inner square and I just draw that out again I'm just eyeballing it not getting bogged down by measurements now I stack the pieces of styrofoam that I have and I drill a hole through all three pieces of styrofoam and then I'm gonna use some pieces of masking tape to attach all the pieces of styrofoam together that way I can cut them all at the same time and now I thread the wire through the pieces of styrofoam reattach the wire to the proxon and cut out the rectangle and I do this on a low setting. I think I was using like number two on the Proxon. Two or two and a half. Definitely not three. That way I can just take my time and slowly cut a nice straight line along the rectangle that I've made. It takes me a minute to do this. But for this kind of thing, it's really worth taking your time. That way there will be less sanding later on. Then when we're done, we have some hollow rectangles without needing to do any sort of seams or anything like that. And the inside needed a, just a little bit of sanding, so I used both a file and some fine grit sandpaper to do that. Now I cut each of those rectangles in half, and I have a little pile of rectangles. Next, I start attaching toothpicks to the rectangles. And I'm using wood glue, because that's going to hold really nice, and have a little bit of a work time with that as well. So if I mess up this part, I can just go ahead and fix it later. And after I'd already done two of these like this, I decided to just do it the way you see right now and I've drilled the holes in, in the rectangles and just slid the toothpicks all the way through and then attached them and that was actually a lot more efficient and I could get the gel cells nice and straight without struggling to put the rectangle pieces on because that was a little bit of a struggle. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, just watch what I'm doing. It's pretty easy. And I'm using these jewelry pliers to pull the toothpick down through as well as get the rectangle down to the height that I want it. See, now we're starting to look like a sort of spiky gel cell. Then we can just go along and clip off all the tips of the toothpicks and that's going to be the bottom of the gel cell or cage. I guess it's more of a cage. It's going to be lifted down over whatever is inside. So rather than having a door, it's a sort of cage that's lifted up by a chain. You'll see in the end. Stay tuned. And then we got this nice little gel cell. I said it again. This nice little cage. And they fit nicely in the room. So now we're going to add a little bit more to the top. And I just cut out some more rectangles and cut them down to the width that I want them. Then I just hot glue those on to the top of each of the cages. Then I go along each of the cells and add a little bit of decoration by doing these indents that are going to look kind of like rivets. It's just going to help the metal look a little bit more like it's manufactured or something like that. And then I take my file and add some gouges because I don't want these to be brand new cages. After all, it's probably been hundreds of years since these have even really been used. So then I take a paper clip and I bend it into a horseshoe shape. I add some holes to the top of the cage and I attach the wire to the cage through the piece of paper clip. And I use hot glue to glue that down on the other side. And this is going to be up in the top of the cage. So the hot glue you can't really see, so I sort of spread that around and I leave that chain like that. And I clip each of the chains, and I do the same thing to all the cages, but I clip each of the chains just a little bit shorter or longer than the previous one. That way just, they just have some variety. Maybe some of the chains been broken or something like that. Then I clip out some of the pieces of toothpick. That way it looks like the bars have been damaged a little bit as well. I think if I would have had more time, I would have added some like wires or something, some thicker wire. That way I could have bent them too and made it look like something had like burst out of the cage. But if I ever have a chance to build these again, I'll do something like that so I can show you what I mean. Then I paint the cages black with a mix of glue and black paint. 
Okay, now we're gonna start building the fire. And this is a wall of fire that we're gonna be building. And it's pretty simple to build. I'm just gonna be using this silicone mat and I'm gonna kind of draw flames with hot glue. I'm just gonna draw a bunch of different tongues of flames separately and then later on we'll glue them together. Also during this, I used a spray bottle to make the hot glue dry a little bit quicker and made it so I can handle them too and not have a whole bunch of strings when I touch them if they're still a little bit too hot. So I take these tongues of flame and I glue them to the silicone mat. And it's not gonna stick to the silicone mat, so I'm just kind of building up a base of hot glue and building up this fire. And once I have all the tongues of fire glued, you can see it's already looking like fire. Kind of like a clear white fire or even water. So now I'm just going to add some little bit of touch up pieces of hot glue. That way it has a nice strong base and it has more details. Then I take care of all the strings that I did have with hot glue. Take off as many as I could see and that's what we ended up with. Now you could paint this with some sort of like transparent ink or paint and just paint it orange-ish and then put a light underneath and you could get a really cool flame as well. But I decided I wanted to show you guys how I paint flames because this is the perfect opportunity. So instead I'm going to be covering this in white paint and Mod Podge, a couple coats and then we're going to be painting it with an airbrush. But we'll get back to that in a little bit. First, we're going to work on these cages. And I'm painting them a mixture of kind of a dark, I can't remember the exact colors. These are deco art, like high metallic paint or something like that. I can't remember the name of them. And one of them's bronze and one of them's like an old steel color. And I'm just dipping it in one and then painting and then dipping it in the other and then painting and it's going to give this nice modeled looking metallic look and it's going to look like old metal that way just by doing that and we're going to do a little bit more than just that we're also going to add a little bit of rust and a wash but anyway it's already starting to look like old metal like that and I paint all the bars the same I paint the inside of the cages and I Run the brush along the chain. I try not to build up too much paint on the chain because I want the chain to be loose and look nice as well. And then while that's drying, I go back and I start adding layers of yellow to my flame. And I build it up slowly and with an airbrush it's actually pretty quick to get this nice transitioned look with fire. Um, the bottom I'm going to keep white and then I'm going to work the yellow darker as you get to the tops of the flames. The hotter a fire is, the wider it gets. So that's the whole idea behind that. It's going to look nice and fiery. And then I build up the orange the same way. I leave a lot of the yellow showing. And the tops of the flames are going to be orange. And then I'm going to transition to a dark red. And this is what we got so far. It's looking pretty good. And then I'm going to add a little bit of blue to my mixture of reddish orange. And that's going to give me an almost blackish brown color. And I'm going to do the very tippy tops of the flames with those. It's going to add a lot of contrast to the flames and it really looks good that way. Okay, now back to the cages. I'm just going to add a quick wash of black. This black wash is basically ink, flow improver, and water, and a little bit of varnish. And it does a really good job of getting in all the cracks. So adds a little bit more of the detail. Some of the gouges are going to show more. And the metal is going to look a little bit older than the original coat. So then on to the rust. And this is just, I'm just going to add a coat of like reddish brown. And I mix this brown with some of my primary colors. I think it was mostly an equal parts yellow and red mixture with a little drop of dark blue. And it made a nice reddish brown rust color and really helped give the cages that old kind of rusty iron look. Then I use my airbrush to give everything a matte varnish and this is what we end up with. Turned out amazing. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. This whole wall of fire is going to be blocking the characters from getting through and only like some sort of magic user is going to be able to stop this fire or the people are going to have to like bypass through the bars, maybe break the bars of the jail cells. There's going to be several ways for the characters to get through this obstacle. You can even turn around and go through other parts of the dungeon and then end up to the other side. So we'll see. Super happy with the way the fire turned out. That transition of colors is just great. Same with the cages. I was really happy with the way the cages turned out. Every part of this room was fun. And this is how the cage works. Big thanks to the Patreons. I'm going to go ahead and put everybody's name up on the video this time. 
I appreciate all you guys. Thanks so much for sticking around through this whole dungeon build. It means a lot to me. Two favors I want to ask of you right now is to like this video and comment below. Even if you just say hi to me, I appreciate that. It helps trigger the algorithm gods and they will push this video out more and more people will be able to enjoy the dungeon build. Now, if you want to watch other parts of the dungeon, then go ahead and click on the video that I have on the screen for you right now.